I think we should abolish capitalism, but the... How do we do that? The... It won't happen all at once. But gradually, uh, I won't be able to buy anything. (laughs) I was at McCormick Place in Chicago for a convention of the Democratic Socialists of America. I wouldn't call us in a pre-revolutionary situation. You know, we're in a pre-pre-pre-revolutionary situation. I was there with an open mind. After all, I've always thought of the left as fighting the good fight. You know that uh, democratic promise that we have supposedly in this country of a government formed by the people? I don't see it became disillusioned with, you know, how we, how we treat the working poor in the United States and elsewhere, right? Together we can be a force against our shared enemies, fascism, imperialism, racism, and capitalism. Basically all the isms. My question for these people was about that last ism, capitalism. Now I'm no economist, but I can Google. Basically, capitalism is what you have when businesses are privately owned and operate for profit. You may notice that capitalism describes nearly any business you can think of, from superstores to your local hair salon. Does all of that really have to go? You're afraid that there's not going to be like a consumer economy or whatever. Yeah, people like to have stuff, you know? But there's no reason to think there won't be stuff. It's very strange. Do you feel like we need to abolish capitalism? In time, yes. How do we do that and what comes after? I'd like to see it become like a Star Trek utopia. You know, that's that's just me. Does anyone say, hey, can we maybe like not be like, oh, we need to get rid of all of capitalism everywhere? Like, has anyone expressed that? I think that would be a a shortcut to achieve wider consciousness. It's... Where do I get a sandwich in your socialist utopia? At the corner store. (laughs) It's a very bizarre question. Sadly, I was kicked out before I could talk to anyone less evasive. Give me your credentials. Thank you. Ma'am, can I have your credentials, please? I don't understand. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's just how it's going to be, so... Well, that's awfully authoritarian. <laughs> I mean, what? what? No, it's just how it is. You know, we're an abolitionist organization. We don't believe in white police, but the hotel has its own kind of procedures for how they handle that. We left before the abolitionists could remove us by force. But then I noticed another event taking place. And these people seemed fun, positive, not hostile. I'm at the Black Women's Expo. I had stumbled upon a convention for black female entrepreneurs. We have mango honey tea, we have pineapple honey tea, and we have peach honey tea. Now this was more like it. (laughs) I love that reaction. Mmm, that is a delicious candle. (laughs) I wish I could eat it. Are these all candles? These are all candles. Oh my god. Can I smell this one? Oh, I like that. It's good and fruity. I came here to cover socialism, but now I was luxuriating in the sights and smells of sweet, sweet commerce. I have 15 businesses. I have a therapy business, a cleaning business, uh, drop shipping, e-commerce. These were some of the most rabid capitalists I'd ever met. And so I make like tumblers, I make the glass cups, which is here. This is Bitch Be Gone. It kills 99% of thoughts and bitches. And it eliminates hoes. I'm a author of 17 books. 17 autobiographies. I wish I could be both this productive and this self-involved. I have the second part down. <laughs> I couldn't resist talking politics. Do you think we should get rid of capitalism? Uh, no, it's a part of our everyday life. In my honest opinion, it's necessary. The world doesn't work without it. It just doesn't. Capitalism is a thing. It's never going anywhere. It doesn't really benefit it's certain people, and then it does others. Solidarity forever. It can benefit you if you know how to actually make it work for you. That's just the way the world works. You have to live with what you got. Strong. 